right. Welcome you to our uh, Board of Adjustment meeting uh, for, for July 9th, 2021. Um, we have staff here in person. We have some staff here virtually. And um, ready to go, get going. Um, first item was, uh, I'll join me with the Pledge of Allegiance. you. Um, it looks like we've got three of us here that makes a quorum. Um, uh, minutes. Uh, it, I wasn't here at the previous meeting, so do you guys have any corrections or additions to the minutes that need to be made? And do we need to approve those by motion or just because some board, because the, if some of them just, okay, so we need a motion to approve the minutes? Or they're just as they're approved as unless there's any corrections. That's how the Planning Commission does it. So look at our rules and see what they say, huh? Yeah. It's okay. Chair, I'll make the motion we approve the minutes as read or as reviewed. Second. I'll second that. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, hey, our item on our tonight's agenda is uh, BOA 2021-08, consideration and action on a request for a 25 foot variance to the 75 foot stream corridor setback for lot seven in Oaks at Wolf Creek. Uh, presenter is uh, Felix and the applicant is Scott Bracken. Yes. Thank you, uh, Chair Borkman. Uh, it's a pleasure to see everyone this evening. Um, I can't hear you. Uh, I'll make sure to speak a little closer to the mic, and then uh, hopefully, can you hear me okay now? That's better. Okay. Um, and so, to, what what we have before you right now is a is a request for a variance. <laughs> uh, so, any. Any request for a variance that um, uh, something that's written into the standard uh, code. In this case, the variance request is from a, a stream corridor setback standard. Um, the the Ogden Valley sensitive lands code lays out minimum distances from the high water mark of the stream. Um, in this case, you have a year round stream. It's called Wolf Creek. And the minimum distance from the high water mark is 75 feet. So today the applicant is requesting to reduce that minimum yard, minimum setback down to 50 feet. So he's, let's go I, ahead. I just have a question, Felix. Um, has that always been 75 feet or was it 50 feet at some point? You know, before it was 75 feet. Yeah, it, it, I imagine it was 50 feet at some point because that's the way it was drawn on the dedication plat when the plat was recorded. So that's that. That's my assumption. Now going do back, do you happen to know when that change was made? I don't. I can speak to that a little bit. This is Steve Burton. Um, I'll, I'll mention also. Um, normally, the planning director Rick Grover would be here, but he's out of town. He's asked that I be here in his place. So this is Steve Burton from planning. Um, this subdivision was recorded uh, a few years before the uh, stream corridor setback ordinance recorded. And so previously there was a 50 foot setback for this stream. And then in 2005, that ordinance was adopted and it changed that from 50 feet to 75 feet from the high water mark. And so that's why on the subdivision plat that was recorded, they showed uh, a 50 foot stream corridor setback. Yeah. Just one last question. This subdivision plat that we're looking at uh, with uh, Scott Bracken, the applicant, was that 
uh, submitted be prior to 2005 was his lot part of the original that uh, when was allowed to was use recorded. the was it, yeah when was it recorded was that prior to 2005 well, let's see here his lot I do have the plat in the report let me see if I can find the year we okay. can actually pull up the oh do you have the plat Felix I think so, it was like 2003, if I remember right, is when the plot recorded. Okay. Be the very last page. Steve, as long as we're kind of chit-chatting, um, even though the plot may have been recorded prior to that, that supersedes the recording of the plot. That, if I understand that correct. The current stream corridor setback is still applicable. Yes, That's correct. So it doesn't recognize any non-conforming rights if it was already in place. It, that's correct. The the stream corridor code does does not um, offer any exemptions for previously existing lots. Felix, what's the name of the subdivision? Um, for some reason, I'm having trouble bringing up the bringing the plot block back. There it is. Um, Hidden Oaks. Hidden Oaks at Wolf Creek. Yeah, Hidden Oaks at Wolf Creek. Hey, Marta, will you allow me to share my screen so I can show everybody the plot? Sorry, Felix, will you stop share? Oh, yeah, cool. go ahead. So here's the Hidden Oaks subdivision plat. I'm just going to go into the recording date down here on the bottom right. Oop, not what happened there. Did you have more in your presentation or do you or are we just asking questions or yes i have a, a little bit more information to share um but we were looking for the date uh, the recordation oh. date for that uh, hidden oaks cove subdivision okay it's, so it recorded september 12 2003. okay thanks okay i'm gonna bring the report back up So the the reason why the applicant desires this request is, is uh, to build a home on this lot. It's currently vacant. Um, it's currently just you know your natural vegetation, some trees and grasses, and um, there's there's some of the the duties and powers that the Board of Adjustment has is to hear and decide variances from the requirements of Weaver County Code. Um, there's, there's criteria that all five criteria must be met before the Board of Adjustment can uh, prove a variance. Uh, the criteria are listed here in the report, as you can see. Um, if the applicant is, is able to show that literal enforcement of the ordinance would cause an unreasonable hardship for an applicant that is not necessary, that is not necessary to carry out the general purpose of the land use code, and um, and the second one there is there are special circumstances attached to the property that do not generally apply to other properties in the same zone and c granting the variance is essential to the enjoyment of a substantial property right possessed by other properties other property in the same zone d the variance will not substantially affect the general plan and will not be contrary to the public interest E, the spirit of the land use ordinance is observed 
and substantial justice is done. Um, so in this, uh, the, the applicant did provide a narrative that uh, describes um, their argument as to why they think uh, this property is a good candidate for a variance. Um, and so you can see items A through E um, says literal enforcement would cause an unreasonable hardship due to the resulting minimal buildable area. B, special circumstances that exist on the property is that the unusual lot configuration and the 75 foot stream corridor setback that is 25 foot greater than what is depicted on the dedication plat and granting the variance would allow the owner to increase the distance of the home from the driveway and the driveway from Powder Mountain Road and increase the amount of natural foliage preserved. D, the, the 50 foot setback depicted on the plat for lot seven of Hidden Oaks at Wolf Creek met the standard the standards at the time of its creation for the preservation of riparian and other natural areas. Uh, and E, this variance request is not an attempt to avoid or circumvent the requirements of the county land use code. The applicant has gone through the proper channels in applying for the variance and the propose, proposal still observes the 50 foot setback from the stream. And this last um, paragraph here I'd like to bring your attention to is that if the board determines that all five criteria are met, the board may choose to grant the requested variance. Um, it is recommended that by staff that prior to any decision, the board discuss and consider each of the criteria as they relate to the site and the specific proposal, proposal excuse me. And so um, with this staff report, there's some visual aids and this has helped maybe kind of visualize the, the configuration of this lot. Um, this is uh, still has four sides, but you can see on the rear of the property, um, there's a stream corridor, I guess on the east side of the property. And um, you have Powder Mountain Road there. This is a corner lot and then you have Fairways Drive. There's, there's the narrative. And here's the site plan that was submitted with the building permit. And what I've done is I've scaled it out and shown the, the distance from the high water mark to the, clo to the uh, closest proximity of the home, is, which is that 51 feet. Um, and then here's um, just the architectural drawings of the home that the owner wishes to build and the floor plan. And then um, there is also, I also have a, so here's the dedication plat. The highlighted in yellow is lot seven, the lot in question. And this is a, a, an image taken from the sensitive lands map that we use to find if the property is in, in, encumbered by any type of streams or intermittent streams. In this case, you can see that this is a year round stream because it's, it's depicted in a solid blue line. And here is a, an overlay. You have the, the site plan for building permit overlaid on top of the dedication plat. Um, you can see lot seven, those hatch marks indicate the buildable area and the area in green or the lines that are in green are the actual site plan. And the lines that are in red are the dedication plat. So I have a question on that. If the house were kind of rotated a little bit so it was more square to the street, could it meet that uh, setback? if you just rotated it a little bit and it could be moved forward a little bit and, and still not need the full 20 the full and maybe i guess what i'm thinking is maybe a little bit of the setback because you know we, we could 
reduce it a little bit, but maybe not the whole 25 feet. But. Yeah, that's a good observation. And I haven't gone and taken, maybe re reorienting the house. I haven't taken it that far, but um, that's a, yeah, that's a good point. But, it's kind of at an odd angle to the street anyway. If it were rotated just a little bit, to me it looks like it might could meet that. Can I speak in here? Hi, this is Scott Bracken. Did you want to hear is from staff Scott? finished with their presentation? I still have questions for staff. Yes, one moment, Scott. So, Felix, can you yes. can you share on this stream? Is this truly a year-round stream? There's some that depict on maps, and they're really not. Yeah. Is this one of those, or is this thing flowing right now? That's a good question. I don't know. As far as the maps that we use, that's what we would go off and and those oftentimes when when we make a recommendation or a requirement for setbacks, um, county engineering will go out and actual uh, find the high water mark um, and just you, verify. So you don't know if that's happened, no, because there are some streams in the upper valley that are depicted as year round and they're not. And that's what I wonder if this is one of those. Um, I agree with the chair. I, I think perhaps there's some self-imposed by desiring to have, I mean, there's always self-imposed because the size of the house, the configuration of the house. That being said, um, on the presentation you did, item E on page two, <coughs> This proposal still observes the 50 foot setback from the stream. There's no the, it's a, a, because there's no 50 foot anymore. The 50 foot was superseded in 2005. And uh, so it, that should read the proposal still observes a 50 foot setback, which that's what it, that's what it would allow. Um, the, that's just kind of a comment the um I, I had one other thought on this and, and i agree with the chair in terms of the orientation of the home um but i you know if we don't have engineering yet do we even know if that's the high water mark um according to our ordinance and our map that we we are using um we would call this a year-round stream um, your question is if he's showing the appropriate uh, distance from the high water mark yes our i mean just our last and it's in our minutes our last meeting we gathered because approval had been granted and then when the engineering went out the stream high water mark was actually found to be closer and they'd already started the house and had to stop it I, I wonder if we're premature here tonight before engineering. It, it feels like engineering should have already established the high water mark. So they, so just so you know, um, they have uh, uh, their Mr. Bracken submitted a building permit with this site plan, and our engineers have approved his building permit. Okay, so that would indicate subject to the variance, right? Yep. I, I just have a comment as well. Is it lot six that's next to his that's already been built? Yes, is that I believe so, yes. Mm -hmm. And they must have had a, engineering must have decided where the high water mark was for the distance from their home to the stream. Mm -hmm. So that could be used maybe as a reference. But I, I wonder, was that home built prior to 2005 as well? Is that why it was allowed the 50 foot variance no that home was built um was it last year was it which which lot the lot lot, lot six. six across the stream when was that house built 
Or lot, that's lot eight, excuse me. Is it? It's hard to read. Yeah, lot eight was like like last year or the oh, year before. No, on here it does show lot it. six. Okay. Directly across. We can find that out. <coughs> not next to the road, not ne not next door on the road, but across the stream on the other side. Yeah, lot six. I see. That's a good question. Is lot eight also 75 feet? Is the home 75 feet from the stream right now? If it was no. last year? Lot eight was also grant, was granted a variance to that, to that 50 feet. So the 25 foot variance they were granted. Okay. So lot eight was granted that variance and lot six, depending on when it was built, may have been granted that variance. That's correct. Lot six, it, it says that that house was built in 2014. So. We we can't really see how, where the houses are on either six or eight, and it really doesn't matter because it's not pertinent to this particular um, request here. But the ordinance was adopted with an intent, probably dealing with public safety. And if there's a reason, I mean, like, like uh, Mr. Mumford was saying, if it's if it's not a, a year-round stream, it's different than if it is, mm -hmm. because there's a lot of safety differences in what kind of stream it is. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Well, I think I, I think the largest reason I might be wrong in this, Steve, but I thought the purpose was for riparian habitat, protect the stream corridor, encroachment. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I guess it could be public safety too. You're, you're right. Uh, member Mumford. That's right. Uh, it, it was more along the lines of riparian and protecting stream corridors. Um, having, having looked at that file fairly recently when that ordinance happened in 2005, uh, it, it wasn't as much about public safety. Felix, last from my perspective, was this was this lot and, and this decision is this a, a new purchase? Um, I mean, since two thousand and five, because if it was, this lot was purchased knowing there's a seventy five foot setback. Yes, yes, um, that's a good point. Um, I I don't know when it was purchased by Mr. Bracken. Um, that's a good observation. I mean, we can inquire with him, I suppose, when it's to that point. So the reason I keep bringing this up is, is there in B1, uh, one thing that we should discuss is, is does, by not granting this variance, do we deprive the property of privileges granted to other properties in the same zone? So I think it's worth it consideration and discussion because there are definitely two other uh, lots that that do enjoy this variance so. well yeah and the, the property right to build a home is give is a given but the size and location orientation of a home could be modified so it's mm -hmm. um, the property rights uh, as far as I see it, it's with yes you can build a home there and we don't want to deny that it's just making sure that the intent of the ordinance is still satisfied and, and that uh, the state law regulations on how we grant a variance are all satisfied and and i think to uh, to neil's comment Lot six is definitely a different size lot than seven as well as eight. I mean, each lot is independent and that's why looking at these, we need to look at seven independent of, of what's happened around it. And then from a legal perspective, you're pretty much confined to the application to what is uh, particular about this specific property. I don't have anything else. Any other questions of staff? Is there anything else to add, Felix? No, that's all. Okay. I have just one. Are there any sure. neighbors that oppose this? Is there any 
anybody else out there that's... You know, I, I did get one phone call, and I didn't get a chance to follow up with, with that. Um, but I would imagine if, if they had something, um, maybe a concern, um, they're definitely welcome. Public notice was sent out, the Zoom link was shared, so there's, there was opportunity to them. To no written letter, no, just no. a phone call. Yes. Okay. All right, uh, let's hear from the applicant. Mr. Uh, I can't read your name anymore. Scott Bracken. Scott, whatever. You're muted right now, so. Go ahead and unmute your mic, Scott. Okay, can you hear me okay? There you go. Yep, gotcha. All right, just maybe if I could go over a couple of your questions or concerns you had. Um, the orientation of the house, if you look at the dedication plat, you'll see that these two, lot seven, lot eight, are required by you, doctor, to have a common driveway. So that's one reason for the, uh, the angle uh, placement of the home. Uh, and that also allows for more highway directly into the garages. Because of this unusual, um, uh, you know, the, 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 the dimensions lot, the setbacks, there's so, such a small buildable area, we designed the home specifically for the lot. Just so we could <clears throat> take into consideration um, other things I got to, uh, you know, had to overcome, of course, was something sizable enough to um, be uh, approved by uh, Wolf Creek. So, of course, that's already done. The other thing, by, by turning the home uh, more at an angle at the street and moving and giving me less than the 25-foot setback, it puts the, basically, design of the home, if you see it, it's, there's a, you know, it's a four-car garage, requires a lot of space. Uh, puts it too close to uh, SR 158, which uh, UDOT will not approve. Uh, the other thing, by not if I we left the house uh, right at the um, um, on the site plan, but had to move it 25 feet forward toward the road. There again, I would only be have a 14 foot setback, and my driveway would connect with my almost an entire driveway would connect uh, with the length of the house to SR-158. Um, the other thing to consider is this is um, not only is there a 50 foot setback from the high water mark, there is a vertical rise of approximately 15 feet even from the high water mark. Uh, we did the geological study um, and he had shown too that the uh, it was not a it was not a hazardous zone, um, and I think you you have all that Felix. Yeah. Uh, the stream itself does not run year round. It's been uh, shut down for at least a month due to the drought. It generally always shuts down every year about July. Is it what's it fed by? Do you know? Me? Is it just snow melt? I don't think I heard that. The source of the stream. Can you hear that, Mr. Bracken? They're wondering about the source of the stream. Do you know where the what? What the stream is fed by? It's it's just winter runoff from down Powder Mountain. Is snow melt? Yeah. Yes. Mr. Bracken, if if uh, this is not, in your opinion, a year-round stream, is that because it's diverted? And if so, yes. Is it they divert diverted it for upstream? irrigation? Yeah, they divert for irrigation, which is where it's gone now.
it's been dry now for about, oh, I would say three, four weeks. <clears throat> Without the variance, uh, I don't, with the buildable area, I don't think it's possible to put a home in there and still meet um, Wolf Creek's requirements on size. Scott, what is the square footage of your home? 2236, I believe. Okay. Yeah. Basic rectangled home, uh, 60 by 40, basically. Yeah, 2,400 square feet. It's got some recesses and setbacks that make it, makes an overall living space of 22, I want to say 2243 off the top of my head. Um, and then the lower level point, the same square footage, all the lower level is mostly garage. There's no living space in that area other than a half bath and some other rooms like that. Scott, I'm not sure I understood what you said about the driveway. Is it not allowed to connect to the state road or which side does it come in on? No, I I, I tried to work with UDOT on bringing my road directly off of SR 158, mm -hmm. they denied me. They said my only access, they says, well, you, uh, as you can see right there, you can see on lot eight common driveway swinging in. That also, that's where we're gonna share a driveway mine. So my house is turned just to, just to better accommodate the driveway. They will not allow me a private road, which I you know every home along there has a private road and most of them have double private roads, but they had told me that there's no way I'd ever get that done. And uh, it told me they're cleaning up all the homes all the way from my property down. There's approximately 33 private driveways, eight of which have double driveways. UDOT's telling me they're going to clean all that up. I'm not sure how they propose doing that, but. It's almost like they change the rules daily, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they denied me access, so now we went back to the original plan, as you see right there. And there is, uh, Felix does have a revised site plan showing that new driveway as it comes across lot A. Is that on the site plan? Yeah, it was submitted as one of my revised site plans. The very last one. Oh, is the last page? Uh, not on my plans, no. It was just an individual page submitted. Maybe, is it? Not, no, not that one. Okay. So, Mr. Bracken, just a, a question for you with regards to that shared driveway. And I can kind of understand what you're saying. You come in on the shared driveway to turn into your garage um that it's a little bit of a sharper angle but part of that sharper angle is on the i mean you've got a four car garage is on the outer two uh, i don't know which way is north on this map but there's two that looks like would have the house could be reoriented and you'd have plenty of access to to turn in but the second garage it would become very tight very tight Yes. Is that a fair assessment? Well, the other reason, the other reason we, we plot it that way is just because it's a, it gives me a nice line of sight and view of over the valley and over all over the creek. I mean, um, as far as orientation, yeah, I mean, it, all it does is make things very, very tight. It, it requires me to take out more trees and natural. Uh, and that's part of Wolf Creek. They want all, all the natural left in. Whatever I take out, or I have to replant. Um, other than my, of course, my access. But as I say, as once you turn that house, um, it just puts me carrying out more, um, or put me building driveway into that 25 foot setback mark. Oh, 
Okay, I guess we're back to the board. We need to just discuss these five items and see where we're at with them, I guess. Oh, is there any other, uh, any other in the public that have any comments? Did you have anything else to add, Scott? The applicant? That's, a, that's all I had, no. Okay. Is there any anyone else here? Uh, there's no one else in the, in the room. Is there anybody else on Zoom that has any comments that they'd like to add? Hands raised or? Marta, there's nobody else on the Zoom call. Okay. I have a question for Steve regarding the code and, and why it was changed. Do you do you have any information on the why it was changed from 50 feet to 75 feet? I mean, that's a 50% increase of the original. And was the intent of that, I'm sure it was to protect riparian habitat, but does this law in particular apply to the intent of the change, if that makes sense? I mean, there was a change and there was an intention associated with that change in the code. Does this lot meet those requirements? Because I, I would think that most codes when they're changed would be for the entire Ogden Valley and it's kind of a universal change that hey this is gonna there's gonna be a fix-all for uh, the Ogden Valley but we know that with topography and streams and and maybe it doesn't apply quite so much to this lot or maybe it applies more to this lot do you have any comments regarding that whether uh, the 50 foot would have would still be okay if that was or, or maybe that's more important to change it, you know, to stick to the 75 foot that it, it is currently. So I, I don't know the intent behind the change from 50 to 75. Um, I, I, I don't know what that would be. I imagine we can go back and look at minutes and see if that was discussed. Um, but just in general, the, the stream corridor ordinance was adopted for, yeah, for the riparian purposes and for preserving natural waterways. But I, I apologize, I do not know what the intent was behind the change uh, from 50 to 75. So, feet. Neil, yeah. I, I think in some areas, the 50 foot may have been drawn in, but there were other areas in the Ogden Valley that there was not a consistent setback. So whether it's 50, and, and so what they actually have, a year, the main rivers are 100 foot setback. So like the South Fork, the North Fork, Middle Fork is 100 foot. Is that correct, Steve? That's right. Yep. And then these smaller streams are 75 feet. And then a, a seasonal stream is 50 foot. That's what was adopted in 2005. And um, I think that the challenge of some of these is, you know, whether or not they're truly a year-round stream. And I think that goes back to where an applicant would actually have to challenge that rather than seek a variance they'd have to challenge the 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 engineering maps don't you agree steve is that they would yeah they'd have to um the county could potentially come up with a new map yeah, yeah. um in this particular case i can't help i i heard a couple of key words here I can't help but feel there's a certain self-imposed. Number one, uh, he mentioned view. As soon as view comes up, that's self-imposed and it's not a consideration on our part. Um, orientation to take advantage of the view is not necessarily uh, a, a justification. Not probably right. Yeah. And, you know, I, I brought up the point of the four-car garage. If this was a two-car garage or even a three-car garage, that angle isn't as steep. The house could be oriented as the as the chair already asked, um, and it may not it may not lessen it to 75 feet, but it might be 60 feet. You know, the variance request might be 10 foot less, might be 
uh, eight feet less. I, I think um, there's, in my opinion, there's definitely some self-imposed aspects of this. And, you know, I, I always get confused when it's Wolf Creek wants me to build this house. Well, why did Wolf Creek approve these lots in the first place if, if you know, if you have to build a certain size house and it's not going to fit on a lot? Uh, the other aspect that's certainly self-imposed, if I buy a lot in Wolf Creek after 2005, uh, I need to know what my limitations are to build. If that's not unfair. Just as we discuss among the board here. So, Felix, yeah. how does this home compare in size to the other homes in that area? Is this abnormally large? Is it mm -hmm. right in line? Is it smaller? How does I it compare? Know, I, I would assume it's pretty close to to the general size, you know, around 2,000 square foot. Yeah, I, I would just assume that. Okay. Without measuring the neighbors' houses, I And it probably doesn't matter because lots are different. different. And we want them to have the self, the same opportunity as other home or other properties to build a home. We're not trying to deny that, but I think to uh, to have a variance so that I can have a view and I can look at it. Garage. I think there's some self-imposed aspects of this. And Sorry, can you speak up, please? There are some special circumstances in the, it, it's an odd-shaped lot. Uh, I don't know if the slope has any, if there's any slope that's a, you know, reason to grant a variance, but, uh, you know, when we look at the five criteria, we have to meet, we have to find that all five are satisfied. Uh, so as i look at that it it seems to me that if he did orient the house slightly different he would still have a great view but but he would still need a variance there's no way that that house would fit with the 75 foot setback. Um, and so I, I, I worry that we, we may be punishing him just because he mentioned he likes the view, but I don't know if that is really the main, the main focus of this variance request because just a slight tweak and he still has a view. He's just picking the optimal view, but it's, it, it's not going to. Yeah, there's, in as much as as a board, we are just commenting right. between the board members at this point. Yes. So, so Can I make one other comment? Uh, we're back to the board now. I, that okay. Would be game ten is what it looks like. Yeah. And, but it would still not be the seventy-five. Oh, right. and, and, and I think maybe we're more comfortable granting uh, some variance, but maybe not the full 25 foot variance as what's requested. But maybe we could maybe we could table and request them to come back with other options and say maybe you know look at rotating the home a little bit, look at um, if there's any other way that the that we can come closer to meeting the intent of the ordinance so that we can protect that stream. And, and, and the advantage of tabling is gives the applicant an opportunity to come back without paying more fees. I think that's correct, isn't it? Right. And, and uh, uh, perhaps present a little different configuration that would lessen the variance requests. Because honestly, I don't think it should be denied, but I don't think it should be approved either. <laughs> the way it is, I think there's, because the, you know, there's, the proper right is still there. Well, in taking that action where you go towards 
a, a middle approach where you might grant some of the variance that reduces that self-imposed hardship uh, element. Because if you have that in there, the law requires that you deny the variance request. You have to meet all five of these criteria. And so if you can eliminate that self-imposed hardship by actually getting as close as you can. I'm not hearing you very well. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, with the self-imposed hardship, all five of these requirements, you have to satisfy all of them. Otherwise, you have to, the law requires that you deny the variance. Right. And so if it can, the house can be rotated or reconfigured to reduce that self-imposed or to get rid of that self-imposed element, uh, then you're more on stable ground to actually grant a variance. And, and I think, it, if I understand legal correctly, that's the challenge with us just arbitrarily saying, well, we're not going to grant 25, but we'll grant 15 or 10. You might need to see something more concrete. Yes. And we don't know what options were, are available in terms of, you know, how, how it could come closer. Is, is tabling a good option, though, at this point, or do you feel that that's not? I think tabling is fine if to, if it is you can actually you know reconfigure it with say a three car garage or two car garage and reangle it. it we could see you know if that's doable uh, uh, where you preserve uh, maybe sixty feet of uh, the setback from the, the stream. So yeah, I think that's a perfectly appropriate option. What are we thinking? I think I'd make a motion if you were fitting. Riley, when you are. I would make a motion that we, for tonight, table BOA 2021-08 and give the applicant an opportunity to reevaluate the self-imposed aspects of this and then come back to the board with uh, a site plan that would more closely uh, conform to what the intent of the ordinance is while at the same time trying to mitigate the self-imposed aspect. And I think the new site plan should also show where the driveway is, uh, how it connects to the home so that we know exactly how that works. I would amend my motion to include that. The chair. Yeah, second. I'll second that. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay, the motion passed. Um, any other business we need to talk about? Motion to adjourn. Can I, can I say anything else at this point? Um, I, actually, you really just need to work with staff. Because I think there is some things we're overlooked and not showing on Felix's side. And it's due to orientation, well, it's not due to use. The item's been tabled, so you can bring that back when you come. Uh, when you work with staff, and they can help you uh, come better prepared next time. Okay. Make the motion we adjourn. Second. It's all second. On favor? Aye. Aye. Adjourn. 525. So Felix, you'll get back with these concerns. Yes. Sorry, Rex. Go ahead. <laughs>